Joining me now is Bob Norman, news director at the Florida Center for Government Accountability, and Tom Edwards, who is a member of the school board in Sarasota County, Florida. Thank you both for being here. Bob Norman, congrats on, on breaking this story. What do we know about the relationship between the alleged victim and this couple? How far does it go back, and how did you all find out about this case? Well, thanks for having me on, Joy. Um, the relationship, it, it, as we know it, comes from the affidavit that you mentioned before and, and from the recorded uh, messages and, and phone calls between uh, Mr. Ziegler and the victim. And what we understand is they've known each other, Christian and the victim, for 20 years. Um, not extremely close, but they've definitely known each other for 20 years. And the other thing we know is that more than a year ago, at some point more than a year ago, uh, the Zigglers, Christian and Bridget, had a three-way sexual encounter with the woman. And that's just about it in terms of, of the relationship. And in terms of how we got the story, just great sourcing, <laughs> uh, mostly from my colleague in Sarasota, Michael Barfield, who's the director of public access, um, who originally dug it up, and then we just got together and started putting the pieces together and, and got it mm -hmm. out there. Um, and we're glad you did. Tom Edwards, uh, it, the irony of this is striking. Uh, the Zieglers have been at the forefront of the Don't Say Gay law. Um, they are allies of Governor Ron DeSantis until he recently called for Mr. Ziegler to step down. I want to play a moment from a school board meeting in which you were involved. This was in March, on March 7, when you were slandered and then ended up walking out of the meeting because no one intervened. Take a listen. Mr. Edwards appears to be a lawbreaker and an LGBTQ groomer. I'm calling for an investigation into Mr. Edwards and the details surrounding his working from the inside to bring about his woke agenda. What Tom stands for and what Tom wants to do to our children in this school district isn't what a majority of what... Scott, Scott, everyone, excuse me, calm down. You, There have been multiple comments about lots of different people. If we just allow the people to speak and move forward, it's, we cannot... You, the picking and choosing... I'm sorry, I'm not going to sit here and allow... Them. And I will note that those were actually two different meetings. There was a meeting on March 7, and then there was a meeting March 21 when you walked out. Talk about what the Zieglers have been trying to do and implement in the Sarasota School Board, a uh, school district, and also why you walked out. Well, Joy, thanks so much for having me on. Um, I walked out because the ugly hate uh, LGBTQ plus rhetoric didn't affect me personally, although it was directed at me because I'm a member of the LGBTQ plus community, what I was most concerned about is our children and our LGBTQ plus children that would hear that ugly rhetoric and think that they were gonna grow up to be groomers or pedophiles, and that's unacceptable to me. And so I asked Mrs. Ziegler to shut down the meeting and to shut down the comments. She refused, and so I had to figure out quickly on my feet, how can I get this meeting and ugly rhetoric to stop? So I got up and walked out, and sure enough, that's what caught, what stopped it. I did it to protect our students, protect our students' friends, and our community from that ugly hate speech. You were also in the meeting where uh, Ms. Ziegler tried to get Vermillion hired to consult to the school board and implement what really amounts to a, a Christian nationalist agenda, a white Christian nationalist agenda. What is it that they're, in your view, trying to do? Because it seems that at least... Mrs. Ziegler is in some way somehow part of the LGBTQ community, or at least sometimes. Well, you know, I, I, what people do in the privacy of their own homes is not of my concern. What is my concern are the student achievement and closing the achievement gap in student outcomes. And what I found so horrifying about this process from the origins of Moms for Liberty when I was first elected a school board member, right through the termination of a school board uh, or, or our superintendent, and then into introducing Hillsdale College white Christian nationalism into public education, and now this. It's a constant distraction. And frankly, what, what is the most disturbing is the damage 
that the Ziegler's, along with the Florida legislature, has caused for our LGBT plus students and the black community, whether it's uh, we can't, we have to erase uh, or whitewash black history in order to make sure white students aren't uncomfortable or to hear yeah. don't say gay for all the, that time period while you're discovering your own identity. Yeah, and I will note and that SAT damaging. scores. Yeah, I will note that SAT scores. Indeed, SAT scores have plummeted in the state of Florida. They're now ranked 46 in terms of SAT scores. Bob Norman, I'll give you the last word here. Where does Christian Ziegler stand politically now in the state, and where does this case stand? Well, politically, Christian Ziegler is under tremendous fire. I mean, I just heard before we came on that uh, Rick Scott, Senator, who was really behind his wife's political career, who uh, Bridget had not been involved in politics, until she put her name in for the school board. And it was Rick Scott that appointed her. It was Rick Scott that met with her and said, yeah. you're, you're good. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna use you um, in our movement. And uh, Rick Scott has come out and called for Christian Ziegler's uh, resignation, which is a yeah. big step. And numerous Republican That's officials uh, across we, the board. We, it's really untenable right now. It seems Un with this very serious investigation way. Indeed. Well, we are out of time, but we're going to keep up with this story. Thank you, Bob Norman and Tom Edwards.